Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we've explored the concept of the Kalman filter, worked through a very simple one-dimensional example, also looked at the various matrices that we'll encounter and try to apply the Kalman filter in a more complex situation, now we're ready to do a full-scale, only two-dimensional example of how a Kalman filter works. What we're going to do here is apply it to a simple example where we're tracking an airplane. The airplane has some initial velocity and some initial position, both in, both in the x and the y direction. But since we're going to make this, and of course also in the z direction, but since we're going to make this a really simple example, we're just going to start out with only considering the position and motion in the x direction only. That makes it a two-dimensional case. Later on, we'll do a four-dimensional case where we'll do both the x and the y direction. And later on, we'll do a multi-dimensional case where we do the x, the y, the z direction, and all kinds of other coordinate transformations. But we need to start simple, otherwise it becomes too complex much too quickly. By now, if you've been watching the videos, this should look like a familiar scheme here. This is how the Kalman filter works in a graphical sense. Notice that the calculation for the state has this error function in it here. We're going to ignore that for now. We're going to call that zero. The process covariance matrix also has an error statement here, which we're going to ignore, call that zero. And the observation also has an error, error term here, which we're going to ignore and call it zero. That doesn't mean we, have, we don't have errors in the process. There's all kinds of other errors we'll show you. But this is actually errors which are associated with the actual process of calculating these matrices and the actual error in observing. That doesn't mean there's not an uncertainty in the observation observations which will include but we're not going to include at this moment the errors in the calculation at this point. Notice that I have some numbers here in circles. We're going to do this example where we're going to go systematically through each step and show you what happens along each step and then there's an iterative process where we'll show it again. We'll go through the process over and over again a couple times so you can see how the iterations work in Kalman filtering. Let's start out by understanding what the numbers are there and how they will transform into this particular scheme. And then you'll see later on, we'll go ahead and start doing videos in each of those individual pieces so you can see the details of how it works. First of all, the initial conditions, the initial position, or I should say initial position, the initial velocity, that goes in here. That's the initial state. So we have the initial state in terms of where it's at and what the velocity is, and also we'll have initial covariance matrix in here, which we'll, we'll get in just a moment. The process errors in the process covariance matrix need to be determined, and usually we start out by just simply giving them some initial value that seems reasonable, not too large, not too small, but encompassing. So here we're going to start out with our covariance matrix, have initial position uh, of 20 meter error, initial velocity of a five meters per second error. That's probably a pretty good state to start with under the conditions. Notice that on the observations in the future will be that after we have the initial position, initial velocity, the next observation, and by the way, we're going to take delta t, the, the difference in time is one second to make it easy. So the next time we observe it will be at 4260, then at 4550, at 4860, at 55110. Those are just made up numbers, but it'll help us figure out how to do the Kalman filtering. And then uh, velocities, and the, after one second, we notice a 282, a 285, a 286, a 290. Those will be observational measurements as we're trying to keep track of that plane. Also notice we have some initial conditions. We, we are assuming some initial acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, the initial velocity of 280 meters per second, notice the delta t equal 1 second, and also notice that the uncertainty in the measurement is going to be 25 meters. And also I should put an uncertainty in the velocity. Oh, here are the observation errors. I think I already have it here as well. We're going to assume initial observation errors of 25 meters on the position and 6 meters per second on the velocity. Also notice that on the process errors in the, in the process covariance matrix, the, the error in the position, and this is simply by the calculation that we do internally into the system, 20 meters for the position and 5 meters per second for the velocity. Notice then what goes in here. So when we start calculating the process covariance matrix, we're going to need these inputs initially. And of course, after we get started in the Kalman filter, that will then zero in on a more proper number right there. Essentially, you're trying to get this to go to zero. Also, the initial position will go in here. And then this will be where we use the input for the acceleration, where we're going to then 
calculate the change in position and velocity based upon the acceleration that will go in here in this matrix. Notice we have the process covariance matrix P that's going to be the predicted value and of course we need H matrices. Now the H matrices are nothing more than simply transformation matrices. To be able to take the format of this matrix we will have a different n by n or n by n size compared to the Kalman filter matrix so we have to be able to convert from this formatted matrix to this formatted matrix and that's all these H matrices are, nothing more than that. R is the error in the observation which will come from this these values right here. So when we calculate the Kalman filter gain we're going to need the variation or the uncertainties in the observations and that's what goes in here. Notice that this is going to be the observation matrix Y sub K. Is we're going to take C which is a, another matrix to convert from here to here and then we're going to insert that into the calculation of the new predicted state. This is the initial state right here, the predicted state, and then we're going to actually adjust that with Kelman gain to get an adjusted predicted state which will be more accurate than if we had simply used this method right here. And that's going to be using the Kelman gain and then calculating the difference between the previous state and then the measurement right here. After we've done that we come back over here, we're going to update the uh, covariance matrix to then be ready for the next go around and then of course the X sub K right here is just going to be fed back whatever was the most current condition will then become the previous condition or the previous state of the next iteration of the Kalman filter. Now we're going to go through each of these steps separately to show exactly how to use the Kalman filter in a two-dimensional example like tracking an airplane in the sky. So stay tuned and here are the next videos showing you how to do this.